there are certain games, in fact a lot of games, where you can be sure that a significant amount of the bad dudes are not going to be making it out alive. Pretty much anything with first person shooter or RPG on the label is likely to have you doing a lot more corpse looting than conflict avoiding. That said, there are a handful of seemingly violent games that let you take the pacifist route. In these titles, you can make it all the way to the end, having only doled out a few bruises, if that. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 surprising video games you can beat without killing anyone. Number 10 Splinter Cell Blacklist. We've singled out Blacklist here, but this is not the only Splinter Cell game that will let you get from end to end with your mercy riddled heart intact. Save for two scripted deaths where you are forced to get your hands dirty, the entirety of Chaos Theory can be completed non-violently. I'm not saying you're gonna have a way better time playing a Splinter Cell game without popping off any headshots, but it does add an interesting new layer of challenge to the game. Not to mention the cool trophy you'll get for your trouble if you're able to pull off a true ghost run. Aside from that concrete wondering upon your success, if you are in fact better than everyone, you'll also get extra experience points for your trouble if you go non-lethal in Blacklist. This will require you to go about your journey knocking out baddies and hiding their bodies, or if you're very clever, leaving the hostiles entirely undisturbed and going the full evasion route. If you move to another area while being hunted, there's a chance you'll get hostiles evaded points, which actually play into the panther playstyle and not the ghost playstyle. Interestingly, ensuring that non-lethality was totally viable was pretty important to the devs, one of whom said, People on the team have families, they have kids, they don't want to go around making murder simulators. Number 9. Postal 2 Speaking of murder simulators, and one that people absolutely wanted to play, we've got Postal 2, the poster child for leaving unbelievable chaos in your wake. But curiously, this one can actually be played non-lethally. The last time I personally talked about this game on a What Culture video, it was to highlight an achievement where you can pee into the sky and have it fall back onto your own face. So you can't say this game doesn't have range. Despite the fact that the acclaimed 2003 FPS is basically about a dude going mad and losing his shit on everyone and everything that pisses him off, you don't need to take that route. If you want to switch things up, you can opt out of incinerating the local fauna and doing a murder on everything you can find, and instead stun gun your way through enemy filled areas to cross off your objectives. Make it all the way to the end using non lethal tactics, and it'll pop a message that says, Thank you for playing, Jesus. Number 8 Doom 1993. Yes, that Doom, the one whose moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is usually made up of a ton of executions strung together in quick succession. If you like, you can actually pop that gun away and beat the game without killing any Hellspawn at all. I'm not entirely sure if that's the actual Paragon option to go for here, but it is possible. As you can expect, this is no small feat, and as a result, the act of speedrunning Doom levels on ultraviolence difficulty without harming any monsters has become a pretty coveted and competitive undertaking. There are a few rules though. No harming monsters directly or indirectly, that includes destroying nearby barrels that hurt monsters, you can cause monsters to attack each other, unintentional telefrags are permitted, and you're allowed to shoot your gun so long as your bullets don't lodge themselves into any demons. If you've ever caught yourself thinking that the chaos in the world of Doom could all be solved with a little more peace and love, then this could be the pacifist run for you. Number 7. Metal Gear Solid 4 – Guns of the Patriots Metal Gear is offered up and encouraged non-lethal options and stealth approaches from the outset, but the later games in the series let you play through the entire experience without killing anybody at all, even bosses. In Metal Gear Solid 3, you can get the Peace Walker trophy for wrapping up the game without killing anyone, even if you tranked the guards on the motorbikes near the end and watched them wipe out. Don't worry, they're totally fine, apparently. It's a similar story in Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Much like Splinter Cell, here you can not only avoid killing, but avoid detection altogether. While you're consistently rewarded for keeping foes' lives intact, trying to get through every single encounter, including taking down bosses without using your lethal arsenal, is a big ask. You'll need to master your gadgets and skills, and perhaps most importantly, avoid that voice in your head telling you to just shoot a couple of bad guys to speed up the process. But pulling it off is pretty darn satisfying. Number 6. Thief the Dark Project Thief was ahead of its time in a whole pile of ways, not the least of which was seemingly violent games paving the way to provide pacifist playthroughs, which I'm sure inspired a bunch of the games on this list. 
Similar to the ethos of Batman, this is a game about being a ghost, so you're gonna want to knock guards out and hide their bodies at worst and go completely unnoticed for the whole game at best. Purists would say that the latter is the only way to play, utilizing complex stealth tactics that place the emphasis on timing, distraction, and remaining undetected as much as possible. While it may seem easier to take out everybody in sight, especially since this is a game that doesn't pull punches with its difficulty, you will be awarded a ghost ranking for your stealth efforts. Not to mention the fact that you will ultimately have an easier time being the master of stealth than trying to go toe to toe. Number 5. Rollercoaster Tycoon Perhaps this is an issue of roller coasters being hard to build and test, maybe it's about needing to maintain sufficient handyman for park maintenance, or it could be the irresistible temptation to be the evil theme park overlord I know you are and not drop your visitors in the water. Whichever way you look at it, for some reason many of us have found it extremely difficult to get through a roller coaster tycoon scenario without accidentally or purposefully killing at least one park guest. That said, it is indeed entirely possible. Apparently. I don't personally know, I do the dropping cranky guests in the water thing. But apparently if you keep your park maintained, actually finish those coasters so they don't shoot your guests up into the stratosphere, and let even the shittiest visitors go home to their families unscathed, you can in fact beat Roller Coaster Tycoon without killing anyone. Number 4. Undertale Undertale is a game that tries to make it super clear that there are other alternatives than fighting, though you'd be forgiven for not noticing them or trying to pursue them as that fight button is pretty tempting. But this is a game with a huge reward for those with the skills and determination to engage only in merciful tactics, no matter what they come up against. The fact that you don't have to kill anybody in this game may not come as a surprise, as the tagline is literally the friendly RPG where nobody has to die. But your familiarity with similar games might make you ignore that, especially since there are frequent random encounters which may not seem to have too much significance if you decide to get murdery. If you do opt to constantly interact and show mercy instead of fighting, you might have a tougher time moment to moment, but the ending is seriously worth it. Opting for mercy involves things like patting dogs and ultimately sparing the creature attacking you. I won't spoil the ending just in case you haven't seen it, but let's just say the game has a rabid fanbase for a reason, and this is a perfect example of a game that gives you heaps of room to be as violent or non-violent as you want to be. Number 3. Fallout New Vegas the Fallout series has an excellent reputation for making sure its players feel like they have as much agency and choice as possible in their post-apocalyptic playgrounds. The game is replete with role-playing pathways so you can be precisely the hero you want to be, and that extends to how you engage in the game's combat. There's perhaps no better entry in the series in terms of player choice, including being a pacifist, than Fallout New Vegas. The game's project director himself said that ensuring a viable pacifist route was one of their initial design tenets. He explained, There are ways to win the main plot by killing no one and by killing everyone. You'll find it difficult to get by as a pacifist and you will miss a great deal of content by killing everyone you meet, but it can be done. So if you want to be a friendly posty type courier instead of the scourge of the wasteland, that's totally something you can do. Given the world is riddled with violence and complex interconnected quests, factions, and role-playing systems, it may come as a surprise that this one lets you get from beginning to end without spilling a drop of blood, but there you go. Number 2. Deus Ex Mankind Divided This is a particularly interesting entry, as Deus Ex Human Revolution lets you go the entire game without killing anybody except for the bosses, which were compulsory kills. Players report that this was fixed up for the director's cut so you can now spare bosses, but Mankind Divided mended the initial little violent excursion so the dedicated pacifists would be able to avoid killing anybody at all. In what can only be described as a pacifist dream, this non-lethal approach extends all the way to the game's final boss, who can be punched out instead of straight up killed. Spend the whole game punching and non-lethally taking out the foes in your path via the means of stun gun and talking the talk, assuming you can't simply sneak past, and you'll grab yourself the pacifist achievement for your trouble. Which is great! In a game where your body is kitted out with extraordinary augmentations to cause all kinds of exciting mayhem and damage. Points for restraint, I guess. Number 1. Alien Isolation 
I don't know about you guys, but if I was stuck in the chilling hellscape that is Alien Isolation's game world, the last thing I would be thinking is, I wish I could kill less things. But clearly some of you are just better people than me, because you did ask that question. And it turns out Creative Assembly delivered, because the 2014 survival horror game actually does reward you for being non-violent, even in the face of one of fiction's most horrifying baddies. Complete the game without killing any humans and you'll earn yourself the achievement mercy or prudence. It's not that a survival horror game generally forces you to kill people, for the most part you'll be fighting for your own life rather than trying to take others, but when you're made to feel this vulnerable, opting for a non-violent route probably isn't front of mind, but it's totally there. You can avoid killing, ensure you're sneaking past any potentially violent encounters, distract or stun the working Joes, and, well, you're unlikely to get the upper hand on the aliens. If you manage to play a game this horrifying and still really want to take a non-kill path though, well, I salute you. And that's our list. Do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other video games that can surprisingly be completed without killing anyone. As always, I've been Jess from Mock Culture. Thank you so very much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for way more contenty goodness.